It's 1944, and the Allies in the Pacific War are paying a terrible human price as they push the Japanese back into their final, desperate inner ring of defences and battlefields. The Japanese retaliate with attacks, hoping for decisive and devastating blows against the backbone of the Pacific Fleet, the aircraft carriers. Welcome aboard the USS Constellation, America's flagship and one of the greatest chunks of machinery that I've ever seen. Designed for war, and it was during World War II where these aircraft carriers came into their own. They could be moved into the oceans and make strikes virtually anywhere. If you can imagine, during the last few years of World War II, the Allied forces were trying to regain islands. The Japanese sent up defensive rings and the intensity of the fighting was immense. In amongst that intense fighting, there was relics that I call the ghosts of war. In this chapter, crumbling memorials to crucial battles that changed history. Silent remnants of violent encounters still frozen in time and the haunting remains of soldiers who never left the battlefield. against the Japanese, the Allies unleash overwhelming, explosive power to break the enemy's final defensive ring. But it's not going to be enough against an opponent who's bunkered down. And so the strategy is to isolate each outpost in a chain of Japanese strongholds. And one of the most vital campaigns was the one for the Palau Islands. Concealed in a tropical landscape is a hidden army ready to unleash an unexpected onslaught. A massive defensive system has been carved into rock and camouflage behind every natural cave and crevice. barrage obliterates the surface but unknown to the Allied command an army of 10,000 Japanese soldiers burrowed underground to fight back from a labyrinth of tunnels and caverns. You can see out here is a pretty well flat chunk of coral and there's only one channel that goes through so any boats that want to get up and down here get in they got to go through this channel they can't go across the reef flats and this is what guarded it. these big huge great machine guns have a look at the size of that Whoa. that's a fair chunk of a gun two of them one each side and they use these natural limestone formations build a bit of a wall up here and just let them have it. Would have been pretty close range too. Be flat out being a couple of hundred yards out across that channel. Back up in here, this would have been the supply cave and where they would have camped. Whoa, nice hole. Ooh, smell that. The smell of death is one of the most pungent odours on the face of this world. And here it is. Whew. That's the carapace off a turtle. Probably crawled up in here, sick or injured, and died. Holy smokes! Have a look at this. See this pile of rubble here? Bones. 
human bones. You can see there's the skull, eye sockets, bottom jaw, bottom jaw, teeth. One, two, three teeth. These would be leg bones. There's the back of the cranium there. Crikey. Probably Japanese. Probably died back in here without medicine. And I wouldn't mind betting this poor old bloke died back here sick as. Crikey. <sighs> Spooky stuff. know that victory will follow if they starve the islands. The battle for supply lines turns the Pacific into a graveyard for hundreds of ships and many thousands of lives. remains an eerie resting place for so many ghosts of war. And the one below me is known as the Helmet Ship, a freighter that went to the bottom in April 1944. The supplies in the hull never made it to the embattled troops dug in to their caves and tunnels, and the wreck has become a spine-chilling museum of war. Decks are stacked with a jumbled cargo of depth charges. Have a look at them. And they were meant for Allied submarines that were gradually reducing the effectiveness of these Japanese merchant ships. Check this out. Machine gun. Pretty well corroded, easy to see what they are. Beautiful chunk of machinery. Helmets. A whole stack of helmets. Still stacked like they would have been when the ship was blown up and sunk. Talk about eerie, it's amazing, getting down amongst these ghosts of war. Detonators, ready to arm the depth charges, and they're still in their boxes, neatly stacked and waiting for the battle. They never quite made it. Guns that once fired to protect the cargo below. They now stand down here in the twisted hull, rusted and crumbling, yet a symbol of defiance. Explosive firepower and bombardment, it's not gonna be enough. In the end, it's gonna come down to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat with a tenacious, well-prepared enemy. The Japanese were bunkered in and keen to fight. Wow, have a look at this one. These pillboxes are incredible. Of course, the Japanese would have been camped up here for a long, long time. Their bunks are just over there. And so you can see, this is where they uh, had their guns sitting out. This is like the gun mount. So they'd have it sitting here, focusing right in on this channel. So it was completely covered. And you can see there's another little port here. Well, that faces directly to the pillbox across the way on the other island. Right, so the only one, the only place it would see it, if you put a flashlight in there, would be the other pillbox. So there was their form of communication. There's a chimney up in here, so it was as they're letting this thing off, you know, smoke and stuff would go up there. And it's thick concrete. It is really thick. You see how chunky that is. And they've cut the angles here, so they didn't have to go too far that way, but this way, they're able to go right across. So you can see how far they'd be able to swing their gun from side to side. 